One of the largest contractors for armoured fighting vehicles in Turkey is FNSS. That is jointly owned by the local company Nuro of 51% and BA Systems the remaining 49%. The company was originally established to make armoured vehicles for the Turkish Land Forces Command and eventually built over 2,000 Turkish infantry fighting vehicles and variants. Since then they've invested their own money and have been significant in running a number of major export orders, particularly to uh, Saudi Arabia for upgrading M113s, uh, to the United Arab Emirates for armour combat vehicles and also Saudi Arabia for co armour combat vehicles. They've also got a big deal in Malaysia to build the PARS vehicle. This particular vehicle is a part of their investment program and it's called the Kaplan New Generation. And what that is here to show potential customers some of the new features of the next generation vehicles. For example, it's got a hull of all welded steel armour to which is fitted an applique armour for a high level of protection. Track vehicles are normally very noisy. This one is much quieter and for why? It's got rubber band tracks. Not only are they lighter, quieter, they have less vibration, which is important for the crew, less roll resistance, which means the fuel economy is better, and they don't break up if you go over a mine. This particular vehicle is particular, fitted with a turret designed by FNSS, and what is unusual about this turret is in two configuration. One is in a manned configuration, this one is unmanned. So it's armed with a 30 millimeter, Orbital 80K Mark 44 dual feed chain gun with a 7.62 chain gun. It is laid onto the target by stabilised sights. Each of those has got day channels, thermal channels, and a laser rangefinder. This particular turret is remote controlled, but you can have a manned turret because some customers do prefer a manned turret. The disadvantage of manned turret is that the whole basket takes up space in the hole, which you normally means you have less dismounts, probably two. But they have taken the decision to build a modular turret system so you can have different sites, different weapons. This particular site, you can see the eight holes on the side, that is for the grenade launchers. They're normally 76. Other countries have different calibers. Some have 66, Russians always have 81. And if we look on the side there, just the little device there, that is a mock-up of a laser warning receiver. And what that would do, that would alert the crew that it was under illumination from another laser range find or a laser guided weapon. It would tell the crew the direction of that weapon and what type of threat it was. And then the crew would have a chance to engage that weapon, which is probably unlikely, or operate the, the grenade launchers to launch smoke or some other obstacle. This particular vehicle is fully amphibious, being propelled in the water by water jets mounted on the wear of the platform. But that amphibious capability is an option. Some countries demand it, but most countries around the world, when they see a, a vehicle weighing around 30 tonnes, there is no amphibious requirement. The only requirement is for it to fall to a depth of about 1.5 metres. So this is a technology demonstrator and it's here to show potential customers what that company can do. One thing I did miss, it's got cameras. It's got cameras that provide the crew with situational awareness through, through 60 degrees. Those images are fed onto flat panel displays at the drivers, commanders, gunners and more importantly the dismounts section at the rear. So before the infantry drift Dismount, they can have a quick look around and see what the terrain is before they dismount the vehicle. So this is really a technology demonstrator, particularly in mobility, to show potential customers what, are, what FNS are working on for future generations of combat vehicles.